Hello guys, how are you all, welcome back to my channel, so today we are gonna see, what if Naruto takes his inheritance and leaves, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description, so let's begin the story. Tusan, daddy. Tusan. I did it. Did you see that? Did you? Cheered a girl who looked 8 years old. She had bright long red hair with yellow around the end of her hair, bright ocean blue eyes, and had a round face. She was about 3-1. Sorry don't really know how tall 8 year olds are. She wore a red t-shirt and combat pants. That was great Narumi-chan appalled a man with spiky blonde hair with two long bangs down the side of the face. He had ocean blue eyes and an angular face. He was more handsome than most males. He wore a dark blue long sleeve shirt and black sweepants. Stood about a height of 5'10". This man was Minato Namikaz, the fourth Hokage of Kanahagakur and the yellow flash of Konoha. At the moment Minato was watching his daughter train. The girl now known as Narumi, was the daughter of both Minato Namikaz and Kashina Yuzumaki Namikaz. She looked like an exact copy of her mother, with the exception of her blue eyes, and the yellow strands that outline her hair, and the fact that she is younger. Narumi smiled and continued her training on sensing her chakra and calling it out. She just started training with chakra, and her dad was teaching her how to control it. Great job Narumi-chan, you will be a great Kanoichi in no time. Said Ariti who just came in when she saw her daughter call out a chakra. She stood at a height of 5'8", had maroon hair, and a heart-shaped angelic face. She wore a hair clip on her hair, wore a red t-shirt and sweepants. She had a body of a goddess that would make any male or female die of a nosebleed. With long slender arms and legs, this woman was Kashina Yuzumaki Namikaz, wife of Minato Namikaz and Kanoha's Red Death. Thanks mom. I can't wait until I become a great Kanoichi like you replied Narumi with a smile. Both Minato and Kashina smiled at their child's energy and attitude. In the distance stood a boy who was the same age as Narumi. He had wild spiky blonde hair that went everywhere, electric blue eyes, and a round face. He stood about the height of 3'5", and at the moment was wearing a great t-shirt and sweepants. He looked like any normal healthy kid, but one thing different about him was the three whisker marks on each side of his face. His name is Naruto Namikaz son of Minato Namikaz and Kashina Yuzumaki Namikaz, an older twin brother of Narumi Namikaz. At the moment Naruto was glaring at the nice family scene that was happening at the family private training area. Naruto just sighed and walked away, into his room where he did training of his own. When Naruto got into his room he laid down on his bed and remembered what happened a long time ago, that made him what he is now. Flashback 3 years ago. Hey Tusan can you teach me how to do some cool ninja stuff ask a young blonde Naruto who was hoping his dad would say yes. Sorry Naruto I can't. I have to teach Narumi. replied Minato, Naruto frowned. Why can't you teach both of us at the same time argue Naruto, ignoring the smug look his sister was giving him. Sorry Naruto, I don't have time to do that. Naruto was going to respond with his father until his mother came in. Naruto, go to your room and don't bother your father. He will teach you when he feels that you are ready. Said Kashina in a demanding voice. Naruto, not wanting to argue with his mother, looked at the ground and walked to his room. Why can't I learn how to be a shinobi, but Narumi can. How come she gets everything? said Naruto out loud to himself when he reached his room and closed the door, so no one could enter or hear him. Naruto was considered a genius or prodigy, he was smart beyond measure, and had skills to learn anything really fast, so it didn't take him long enough to figure out that his family favored his sister more than him, seeing as she got mostly everything she wanted. He also noticed the villagers treating her like a hero. Naruto on the other hand barely got anything he wanted, even on his birthday he would get one or two gifts, while Narumi would have tons. He was also hated by the villagers. Sometimes when he would walk around the village alone he could see some of the villagers giving him cold glares. His sister also had a lot of friends, every kid would try to get to know her. While he didn't have any friends, kids would avoid talking to him for reasons he doesn't know. Naruto knew that his sister had the Kaiubi's power in her, and that she was seen as a hero, but he didn't understand why he was so hated by the villagers. He lay on his bed and closed his eyes so that he could rest. Mindscape. Naruto suddenly woke up to see that he was in a sewer, and in front of him was a giant gate with a seal on it. He didn't know where he was so he called hey. Anyone there his response was a giant roar from the other side of the gate, which scared him greatly. Who dares disturb my slumber roared a giant beast, which Naruto could make out was a fox with red fur and nine tails. Naruto just stood there too shocked and scared to say anything. The fox looked down and saw Naruto and started to chuckle. So my jailer finally graced me with his presence. said the fox. Naruto got out of his shock and looked at the confused fox written over his face. Jailer. And who are you and where am I asked Naruto. Yes you are my jailer, and to answer your question I am the great Kaiubi, and we are in your mindscape. Replied the fox now known as Kaiubi. Naruto's eyes widened in shock, the Kaiubi sealed inside him. 
he heard stories of the Kai Ubi but didn't really pay attention because he was too small and didn't go to school yet. You're the Kai Ubi. Stuttered Naruto, who was shakily pointing at the giant fox. The Kai Ubi nodded its head. Are you going to kill me? Kai Ubi shook his head and looked at Naruto. No I won't kid, I saw your memories, and I must say that your parents and the villagers are idiots. Dot said Kai Ubi, and Naruto was confused, so he slightly turned his head, showing that he was confused. Kai Ubi saw it and continued. Your father, who did the sealing, sealed my powers in your sister, believing that she could control my powers, well he sealed my soul into you. Also because of this he is still alive for using the Shinigami to seal me, seeing that Shinigami didn't seal all of me into one person, but split me up and sealed me into two babies. But in return he probably lost about half his lifetime making him die earlier than he is supposed to. Naruto nodded, showing that he understood and is taking the information in slowly. Your father is training your sister early so that she can control my powers, which is impossible without the soul being me, because of the pure hatred and destruction that it contains. Naruto's eyes widened a bit and then laughed at how his father made a stupid mistake. After taking a deep breath the Kaiubi continued, many people died during the Kaiubi attack, many people lost family members, friends, brothers and sisters. Somehow the villagers know that you have the Kaiubi soul sealed into you and hate you for it, seeing as it reminds them of the people they lost. They think that you are the Kaiubi, and that is why they hate you. Naruto nodded sadly understanding what the Kaiubi was saying and looked at the ground and sadly thought that the villagers were right about him being the Kaiubi. The Kaiubi saw this and said, Naruto don't think that you are the Kaiubi because you aren't, you are you, and I can't influence you in any way remember that. And just for your information I am not a bloodthirsty demon who just randomly kills for fun. Then why did you attack Kanoha Kaiubi flinched a little and was then sad. I was controlled. Controlled by who? Ichiha Madara. Who's that? He is the founder of the Ichiha clan. Naruto nodded, then realization came to him. Wouldn't that make him more than a hundred years old Kaiubi nodded. Yes, but because of the eternal Manjiku Sharingan he is immortal, and also used his Sharingan to trap me in order to control me. Naruto only nodded, since this was a lot to take in for a guy his age. At the same time he was thinking. He suddenly came to a conclusion and looked at Kai Ubi with determination in his eyes. I will beat this Ichiha Madara guy for you yelled Naruto, shocking Kai Ubi. You seriously think you can beat him asked the still shocked Kai Ubi. Yeah. Only if you train me Kai Ubi looked into his eyes and saw the determination he had and smiled. Find the kit, but it won't be easy. Naruto smiled. Wouldn't ask for any other way. With it, his mindscape started to grow faint. What happened? asked Naruto, confused. You're waking up from your nap. I will open a link where we can talk without you always going into your mindscape. Naruto nodded, happy to know he didn't have to be asleep or knocked out to talk to his new sensei. Oh, before I forget, can you change your mindscape to something more comfortable since sewers aren't that nice? Sure thing, Kaiubi sensei. One more thing Kaiubi is just a title, my real name is Yoko. With that Naruto faded out of his mindscape and woke up still in the same position on the bed. Then flashback. Throughout the years he has and still has been training very hard every day. Every day he would train himself until he was exhausted and couldn't move. He would usually train in his room or in a secret training area where he wouldn't be caught. Since he was a kid he couldn't lift weight or else it would stunt his growth, so Yoko, Kaiubi, gave him a routine he would have to do every day. He mostly worked on his endurance and doing workouts like push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, and crunches. He also would work on his chakra control, since he had a really large chakra reserve being at the moment high gen and to low dot. His routine every day would be 100 push-ups followed by 100 crunches. This would usually take about an hour or so then he would usually take a short break and to 100 pull-ups and sit-ups, this took about another hour. Afterwards he would run around the village three times, which took about two hours, and spend three hours doing chakra control. He would do this every day and wouldn't cheat or take any shortcuts. When he first began his training he started doing 20 of each, then as time came by he started to do more and more. Eventually he came to where he is now, doing hundreds of each. Eventually he was interested in seals and started to read about them, he guessed it ran in the family, seeing as his father and mother were seals masters. He read how to do simple seals like the storage seal. He figured out how to make a simple storage seal from scratch, but during his study, he came across one seal that caught his attention. It was the gravity seal, it was a seal, which applies extra gravity on you making it harder for you to move, but when released you become faster and stronger. Naruto knew the gravity seal would help him greatly with his training, so with the help of Yoko, he figured out how it worked and applied it to himself. Also during his training Yoko told him to go to the library to read some books on her scroll he may find. He did as he was told but couldn't find much, so Yoko told him to sneak into the Hokage's library and find a scroll that said forbidden move. Naruto did what he was told and surprisingly he actually got in. 
Yoko then told him to find a Cage Bin Shino JUTSU Shadow Clone and for him to know the hand seals and how to do it. It didn't take him long to find it seeing as it was the first thing on the list. After an hour or so of reading he figured out how to do it and put the scroll back where he found it and went back to practice what he learned. When he mastered the Cage Bushin, told him the secret of the Cage Bushin, how when a clone does something when it dispels it sends all its information and experience to the real person. Naruto was surprised that with Cage Bunshin he could even do training and learn more, making him even stronger. With many good things there are also bad things. As time passed by the villagers at first started with cold glares, then changed into beating here and there. Once every two weeks or so there would be a crowd that would corner Naruto and beat him senseless. They didn't do anything crazy since he was the son of their beloved Yandane, but they would show him his place. Naruto at first would fight back, but he realized that would have made it worse, so now he just lets them beat them, though it didn't really hurt, since he was strong and could take weak civilian punches. The children around Naruto's ago wouldn't hang out or talk to him, instead they would flaunt over Narumi or give him cold glares. Some of the people who tried to be his friend only did it so that they could get close to Narumi. During the academy he would be ignored, but Naruto didn't really mind, since he was pretty much alone from the start. Though there were very people that befriended him. Them being Kurana Yuhi, Anko Midarashi, Yugao Yuzuki, Ichiha Itachi, and finally Ichiha Mikoto. Kurunai, Anko, and Yugao helped Naruto one time when the villagers beat him, after that they became friends, but at times he would stay a safe distance away from them, so that the villagers wouldn't hurt them too. Itachi found him during one of his training routines and watched in silence. He was impressed by Naruto's determination and hard work, and eventually talked to Naruto. He asked why Naruto was training by himself and where his family was. Naruto's answer was I am nothing to them, only extra baggage. Itachi was shocked but understood what he meant, he often saw Naruto walking behind his parents with an expressionless face. After that Itachi often visited Naruto as much as he could and helped Naruto with his training, seeing as Naruto was considered a prodigy like himself. Ichiha Mikoto found Naruto walking alone around Konoha one day. She asked why he wasn't with his parents, where he gave them the same answer as Itachi. Mikoto was furious and was about to march over to the Namika's estate and give them a piece of her mind. Naruto tried to stop her saying it wouldn't matter, but she didn't listen to him instead she dragged him with her to the Namika's estate. He still remembered what happened. Flashback one year ago. Ichiha Mikoto barged into the Namika's estate dragging a blonde-haired boy with her. Kashina Namika's. Come here now yelled an enraged Mikoto. Moments later Kashina and Minato came into the front of the door to find Mikoto holding their son. Mikoto, why are you here, and why is my son with you asked a confused Kashina, she thought that Naruto was in his room. I'm here because I found your son walking around Kanoha alone replied Mikoto loudly. Really? Oh. Thanks Mikoto-chan for finding my son. We will take it from here. Minato told Naruto to go to his room, which he did. Though stayed back so he could hear the rest of the conversation since he noticed that Mikoto hadn't gone home yet. Did you even know that your son was outside asked Mikoto, still mad. No, but I thank you again for finding him. Replied Kashina. Mikoto narrowed her eyes and in the corner of her eyes, she noticed a red head that was training in the family training ground. This got a question that she wanted to ask them. Why is Narumi training to be a ninja early, while Naruto is sent to his room? We decided to train Narumi early. And why not Naruto? Mikoto's tone getting colder and colder by the second, which was starting to scare Kashina and Minato. That's because Narumi has the Kyuubi's power sealed into her and has to know how to control it, we will start teaching Naruto when he get into the academy. Mikoto stood there with glaring eyes at the two. I understand sorry for asking a stupid question Namika's and Minato and Kashina flinch at the sudden change in their friend, but just toss it aside, thinking it wasn't anything serious. Mikoto turned around and walked away, too mad to say goodbye. Flashback end. After that Mikoto would help him as best as she could. Sometimes cooking him lunch to give him advice on his training, since she herself was before she retired when she got married and had two kids. She tried befriending him with her youngest son Sasuke, but to her disappointment, he adopted his father's personality at a very early age, which was being arrogant to the max. Sasuke would say things like, Naruto wasn't worth his time, or that the Ichiha are the best in Naruto's annoyance. But at least Itachi befriended him, which made Mikoto happy though she wished he had a friend his age, which Naruto didn't mind. His relationship with his family became worse. As his parents train his sister Narumi in the family styles, Naruto watches in the background always hoping for attention. He would suggest the family go to the movie, while his sister would suggest they go and eat ramen, and to Naruto's disappointment, they always choose whatever Narumi would suggest. After a while of watching and hoping he gave up and trained even harder to show them that he didn't need them. He stayed in his room and did not bother to go out and talk with his family. 
only time he saw them during the day would be dinner, but even then he would stay silent, he would just finish his food as fast as he could, wash his own dishes and go back to his room and train. When the family went on walks around the village he would stay a few feet back from the rest of the family, while Narumi would usually lead. He avoids attention as much as possible by being quiet or staying in corners where no one would see him. During parties he would only be there for an hour or so until he got tired and left. Sometimes Narumi would ask him to play with her, but Naruto would turn her down and say that he was busy. In his free time, Naruto would usually read books about stories, seals, or anything ninja-related. He also painted and drew in his free time. When his parents weren't around he would work on improving his, hoping that he would surpass his parents since they were seal masters. Naruto got up and started to do his daily workout. He took a short break, walked to his desk and took out a sheet of paper with things written all over it. Do you think this will work Yoko-chan? Don't know until we try, but I'm pretty sure it will dot replied Yoko. After the meeting with Yoko the first time, Yoko opened a link for them to talk telepathically so that he wouldn't have to always go to his mindscape. Since then he always talks to Yoko. Yoko is his mother friend, he would tell her things that are happening. In return Yoko would teach him anything from reading and writing. Yoko also helped him with his training. As time went by their bond grew and grew. One day Yoko told him to go into his mindscape and said that there was a surprise waiting for him. Flashback two years ago. Naruto entered his mindscape and saw a giant field of grass. He looked around and saw a giant fox and started to walk up to it. So what's the surprise Yoko-sensei asked Naruto wanting to know what the great surprise was. Yoko looked down at him and smirked. Then suddenly to Naruto's shock a bright white light surrounded Yoko and he noticed the light was shrinking and had the form of a human or something like that. When the light disappeared his body shot back because he suddenly got a massive bloody nose. In front of him was what could be said as a goddess-made human. Yoko had crimson hair and blood-red slit eyes. She had a perfectly heart-shaped face and two crimson fox ears, making her even more adorable and beautiful. Her body was that of a goddess, with a perfect herdless figure, long slender arms and legs, she stood about a height of 5'10 and had tan skin. Above her butt were nine crimson tails. Naruto got back up, but shortly after shot back with another bloody nose leaking out more than before. Why? Because when he got back up and looked at her he saw her in all her glory. He may be a kid, but he was a genius, so he knew some stuff at an early age. Yoko smirked when he got his second bloody nose. Naruto got back up once more to still see her, but instead of getting another bloody nose he covered his eyes and shouted Yoko pouted dot she wore a crimson kimono with flower petals. After she said she was done, Naruto opened his eyes. So Naruto-kun did you like what you see asked Yoko with a smile on her face. Naruto only nodded, still dazed from seeing such a sight. He quickly shook his head to get away from his thoughts at the moment. Truthfully when Yoko told Naruto her name he figured out that she was a girl, but didn't think the demons would have human form. Also didn't think that it would be that hot. I didn't know you had a human form. Said a slightly still dazed Naruto. Yoko giggled a little and replied course I do, how did you think I walked around the human world without causing suspicion. Naruto only nodded. Anyways if that all you wanted to show me then I'll be leaving then. Said Naruto turning around to leave. Yoko pouted, oh Naruto-kun you're such a killjoy only for Naruto to smile, but Yoko didn't see it because his head was turned so she couldn't see her face. I Yoko-chan Yoko's face grew a little red with the suffix, too bad Naruto couldn't see it. I Naruto-kun. Then flashback. I guess it's back to training. Naruto told himself, he put the paper back into his original place and continued his training routines. After Naruto finished his daily training routine, took a quick shower and changed into his nightgown. After he went to the restroom to brush his teeth. After he was done he climbed into his bed and took out a calendar book. In two days will be mine and Narumi's birthday. Said Naruto looking at the date that said October 10. Hokage office. Minato Namikaze was doing paperwork, something he hated to do as Hokage. He was currently looking at a paper that said to release the civilians that were in jail for hurting his son Naruto. He sighed after the Kaiubi attack, and when he announced that Narumi had the Kaiubi power and Naruto had the soul, some of the villagers asked that Naruto be watched, hurt, or killed before the Kaiubi could control Naruto. As a father he knew that he shouldn't let them go, but he was the Hokage not just any Hokage, but the best ever to produce so far. As Hokage he knew that the village came first, and family came later. He knew the pain of the village after the Kaiubi attack, and with Naruto having the soul of the Kaiubi. He knew that the village would target him. He knew it was bad, but the village needed a scapegoat, and Naruto was the only person to fit the job. The best he could do is reduce what they did to him. He signed a paper that releases the villagers from their prison. He just hoped that Naruto was easy forgiving, and his wife and daughter didn't find out about what he allowed the village to do to Naruto. He was about to go through more paperwork until he felt a presence behind him. 
Gireya, what are you doing here? asked Minato while he was approving the request. It seems like I could never hide from you. said Jiraiya. I ask you again why are you here? I assumed you were peeping on women like you always do. Actually the toad summoned me and told me about a prophecy. Prophecy from the toads asked Minato, shocked. Jiraiya nodded in confirmation. What was it about? It said that the chosen one is the child born from two great shinobi and holds great power. I expect that the chosen one would be Narumi since she is your child and has the power of the Kaiubi within herself. Minato nodded slowly, then realization came to him, and he smiled. So my daughter is the chosen one asked a happy hopeful Naruto. I think so, since she fits all the requirements. replied Jiraiya, he saw how happy his student is, and what he was going to tell him would make him even happier. Since Narumi's birthday is tomorrow, I was wondering if you would let me let her sign the toad contract. Jiraiya told Minato his smile was growing wider. Minato nodded to Jiraiya and he smiled. His next student would be another person from his favorite student's family. Since that is done I guess I'll continue my research. See you later Minato. Jiraiya disappeared using Shunshin. Minato sighed and looked at his loads of paperwork and frowned. He still couldn't figure out a way to beat every cage's enemy. After working for a while Minato stopped and started to think about his family. How far they have grown as a family. How happy they were he, Kishina, Narumi, and Naruto. He frowned when he thought about Naruto. After refusing to teach Naruto he pretty much excluded himself from the family. Minato still remembers Naruto asking to go somewhere as a family, but he refused Naruto's idea for Narumi, picking wherever she wanted to go. As time went by Naruto's requests became less frequent until eventually he stopped asking for anything. He even showed his face less around the house, always staying in his room, and during dinner time, he would be silent only looking at his food while he ate. The only time he really saw Naruto was when dinner time and while Naruto and Narumi were walking to the academy. Minato regretted what he did to Naruto and was going to make it up to him. Starting tomorrow after Naruto's and Narumi's birthday, he was going to start Naruto's training. He was going to bring Naruto back into the family no matter what. Namika's estate. The Shina Namika's at the moment was making dinner for the family. She too felt that Naruto wasn't part of the family. Every time he and Narumi would come home he goes into his room and stays there until dinner. At dinner he would be silent and not even give time a glance. When they walked around Konoha he would stay a few feet back and would remain quiet. She noticed Naruto always reading books, which was good, but he read too much and wouldn't go out and play with the children his age. She started to wonder if Nero had any friends at all. She regretted not training Naruto at the same time as Narumi, but believed that Narumi needed extra attention due to her having the Kyuubi's power. She, being a former, knows how hard it is to control Kyuubi's power. Ashina was worried, she didn't want Naruto to isolate himself from the family. She knew that something had to be done, and the moment Naruto walked through that door, she was going to make it up to him. She was going to make the family whole again no matter what it took. She then continues to cook dinner for the family, and especially for Naruto to enjoy. In Konoha. Naruto Ani-chan, where are you? shouted Narumi. Narumi ran around Konoha trying to look for her Ani-chan, after class finished Narumi wanted to walk home with Naruto. To her disappointment she disappeared when she tried to look for him. Naruto on each and she shouted once more, hoping Naruto would come this time. When she got nothing in return she frowned and started to walk home. Narumi loved Naruto a lot, maybe more than she should. She would always try to play with him, but Naruto always turned her down, saying he was busy. She wanted Naruto to feel like a family, not an outcast. During the academy she noticed he would always sleep in class. She also noticed that Naruto didn't talk to anyone in his class, nor did the classmates try to talk to him, since they were too busy trying to get her attention. Narumi tried to talk to him during school, but every time she tried she would be bombarded by her fan club, and when she finally got rid of them, Naruto was gone. Narumi started to remember the past and felt sick at herself. She remembered when she was little after her dad told Naruto that he had to train her first, she started to tease Naruto about it. She would say things like the family loved her more, or show Naruto what she learned to make fun of him. When Naruto would suggest they go somewhere, she would suggest they go another place, and every time they would choose her suggestion over his. Remembering these things made her just want to go back in time and slap her younger self. Narumi walked home alone, another day without Naruto. While she walked home she remembered that tomorrow was hers and Naruto's birthday. She smiled and thought of a plan to get her Ani chan back. She finished her plan by the time she got home, and was going to start at the moment she reached into the house. Namika's estate. Ashina was still cooking dinner, making their family's favorite food, ramen. She heard the door open and turned to see who was at the door. She saw her husband Minato at the door taking off his shinobi shoes. Got to work early Dira asked Kishina. Minato looked up to see his wife in an apron cooking dinner. He smiled and nodded yup he told her and walked into the kitchen. 
When he got into the kitchen he gave his wife a kiss on the cheeks, after the kiss he saw that she had concern written on her face. What's wrong Kashina-chan he asked. It's Naruto, I feel like he is not part of the family anymore. said Kashina sadly, and she started to tear up. Minato hugged her and tried to cheer her up. It's okay Kashina-chan starting tomorrow after the birthday party I would be starting Naruto's training. replied Minato, trying to relax his wife. Kashina looked at Minato with a smile on her face. I bet he would love that. I know he will. Just then the door swung open, and Narumi came barging in with determination in her eyes. Kasan made lots of Raymond today she yelled and went to her room to change. Kashina and Minato were a little shocked by their daughter's reaction, but she did get that from her mother. Wonder what got her all excited. said Minato to himself. Maybe she feels the same way as us about Naruto. answered Kashina, then she noticed that Naruto wasn't with Narumi, nor was he home. Hey where is Naruto-kun she asked, wondering where her son could be at the moment. When Minato heard this he cringed a little knowing where he could be, this was unnoticed by Kashina. As if on cue Naruto came to the door with several bruises and cut marks on his arm and legs. He was slightly limping on his left leg. Kashina and Minato were in the kitchen so Naruto didn't notice them. Stupid villagers can't tell the difference between a jailer and the jailed. They think I'm going to destroy them since I have the soul. I don't even have the power, how can I destroy the village? Naruto mumbled quietly to himself and walked to his room as quickly as possible. Kashina was shocked to see their son was injured, while Minato frowned. Kashina quickly ran to Naruto with Minato following shortly behind her. Naruto she shouted. Naruto turned around and to both Kashina and Minato looking at him. Yes was Naruto's reply. What happened to you asked a worried Kashina looking at his cut. Oh this I was climbing a tree and slipped and fell down. I'm fine really. Kashina didn't want to leave Naruto alone, but guessing that Naruto is fine she let him go. If you're fine then clean up and get changed for dinner. Naruto nodded and walked back to his room. Inner came and Naruto came out of his room with a black t-shirt and black sweats. When he got to his spot on the table he felt like there were eyes on him. He looked up and to his surprise his family waiting for him with smiles on their faces. Even Narumi seemed to be waiting for him, usually she would be attacking the food by now, especially when it's Raymond. What the hell is going on here, he thought to himself. Maybe they finally noticed they have a son and a brother. Replied Yoko, who saw what Naruto saw. We'll see about that. Naruto took out his chopsticks to eat his ramen. When he ate the first bite, the family started eating their ramen. This confused Naruto a lot. Just what was going on to make his family change. So Naruto, how was your day? Asked Kashina, who actually wanted to know her son's day. Naruto was shocked his family actually talked to him. He was a little happy that he was finally getting attention, but that was easily washed away with anger. So now they notice me after all this time. Whatever this change is nothing. But answer Naruto-kun, they don't deserve forgiveness, not right now at least. Naruto inwardly nodded to Yoko. Well since he was going to follow his plan, might as well give them a peace of mind. Fine, nothing special happened. Dot replied to Naruto quickly going back to finish his food. Kashina frowned at the quick answer she received. Then Narumi jumped into the conversation. So Aniki, what did you think of today's lesson she asked. Nothing special dot replied Naruto quickly, finishing his ramen. Narumi frowned at a quick answer, it felt like Naruto didn't even want to talk to them. Naruto finished his ramen and put his bowl into the sink and started to wash it. It's okay Naruto you don't have to wash the dish, I can wash it for you Naruto. said Kashina. Naruto ignored what she said and started to wash his dish. It's okay I'm fine, I wouldn't want you to waste your time on me anyways I can take care of myself. replied Naruto not a bother to give his mother a glance. Kashina was shocked at her son's reply and started to get sad and water started to form in her eyes. Her son thought that he was like nothing in the family. She wiped the tears of her eyes, she was going to change that no matter what it took. By the time Naruto finished washing his dish the family just finished eating their ramen. Since they love ramen they eat it pretty fast. Naruto quickly walked back to his room but stopped when his father called him and told him to go to the living room for a meeting. Naruto inwardly groaned but went to the living room anyway and sat on the couch until his family came. When they finished washing the dishes and everything, they joined Naruto in the living room. Narumi sat next to Naruto while Minato and Kashina sat across from him. Now Naruto I have news for you that will make you happy. said Minato. Naruto glared at him, making him flinch a little before continuing. I am happy to say that starting tomorrow after your birthday, you will be starting your training in the family arts. He said proudly. Does that mean Aniki will be practicing with me? asked a hopeful Narumi. Minato nodded and Narumi's face glowed with happiness. Minato then looked at his son and was shocked. Naruto's face remains unchanging, his eyes looking at him with the same dead cold eyes he always has. Not a single sign that he was smiling or attempted to. 
Kashina too was shocked, she thought that this plan would work, she was sure it was going to work. Narumi saw the look on both her parents' faces and wondered what made both her parents shocked. She turned to look at Naruto and like her parents she too was shocked. Naruto on e chan aren't you happy? Now we can train together asked a confused Narumi. Naruto looked at her with his cold eyes glaring at her. Not really he replied. Everyone frowned. Why not Naruto, don't you want to know about mine and your father's fighting style asked Kashina, hoping to see signs that Naruto was reconsidering his answer. I lost interest after you guys refused to teach me when I asked. Minato and Kashina were shocked and they frowned, both Anamika's and Yuzumaki fighting styles were strong. They didn't understand why their son wouldn't want to learn his family stuff and be extremely strong like them. They broke out of their thoughts when Naruto spoke again. I don't need training from either of you, since I didn't have one before. Why start now? I will wait until I become a genin and have a sensei that will train me to become a shinobi. Even then I will not train or learn any of your style. said Naruto with anger in his voice. He got up and left, leaving his shocked parents and sister where they were. What do we do now? asked Atiri Kashina, after hearing what Naruto said she couldn't take it anymore and started to cry. I don't know anymore, maybe this was a little too much for him to take in for the day. Just give him time, I bet he will get over it. replied Minato, trying to calm his wife. Truthfully he didn't know, since Naruto sounded really serious he could only hope that he was right. Why? Aniki, why cried Atiri Narumi. Narumi was really hoping that Naruto would agree to train so that they could be together and she would have more time to talk to him. When he refused she was heartbroken and started to cry. Naruto slammed the door behind him and checked his things he got ready for tomorrow. He was still mad from the conversation he had earlier with his family. Damn family. They notice me now and think that I would forgive them because I get to learn their fighting style. He mentally yelled at himself. Calm down Naruto-kun it doesn't matter, you just need some sleep so that you can focus on the plan tomorrow. said Yoko trying to calm Naruto down. What Naruto doesn't know is that Yoko liked Naruto and it hurt her to see him angry, especially what happened today. She herself was angry at his parents for noticing their son now, after almost 9 years. Naruto needed to rest so that he could focus on his plan for tomorrow. I understand Yoko-chan. Naruto finished packing his things and got to bed. Tomorrow is when we leave this dump called Konoha. After the conversation with Naruto, the Namaka's family was sad and deep in thought. Minato tried his best to cheer up Atiri Kashina and Narumi, who thought they lost their son brother. After an hour or so of crying it was late and they went to their room for some sleep for the big day tomorrow. In Kashina and Minato's room, Kashina's face and eyes were still red and puffy from the crying. She went to the restroom to wash her face, while Minato tried his best to make sure she was fine. After they were both clean and finished with the night routine. They lay in bed together and fell asleep, both in their mind was how to make Naruto feel part of the family and for him to learn their family style. Though Kashina more than Minato. As for Narumi, she continues to cry by herself in her room. After about 30 minutes she finally got over it and went to her personal restroom to wash her face and her nightly routine. During that time she was like her parents, her determination grew and she will do everything she can to make it up to him. She jumped on her bed and pulled the cover over her letting sleep take hold for the night. Planning on ways to get her back. Next morning. Naruto woke up feeling better than yesterday. He was still mad about yesterday, but it didn't matter. Today was the day he was going to go through with his plan. He walked over to his desk and pulled out a piece of paper that had his plan written out. The day is his and Narumi's birthday, also the anniversary of Kaiubi's defeat. Since today is a special day for Konoha there is no school, since everyone is preparing for the festival. That's when he is going to escape, when everyone is drunk from the festival, plus Kanoha security isn't so great. He was able to sneak into the Hokage office and copy the cage bushin, a forbidden item. There was only one problem with his plan, and it was his family. Apparently they finally noticed him and are trying to get his forgiveness. It didn't matter since they would be too busy with the party for Narumi to notice him anyways. Naruto sighed and put the paper away in his pocket, went to the restroom and did his morning routine. Apparently both his parents and sister were still sleeping, so he quietly sneaked out and went to his secret training ground. It may be his birthday, but that doesn't mean he gets a free day and relaxes from training. He left his home to go to his training ground. After an hour when Naruto left, Narumi woke up really happy since today was her and Naruto's birthday. She quickly got out of bed and ran to her parents' room. Dusan. Kasan wake up. It's mine and Naruto's birthday shouted Narumi, jumping on her parents' bed, waking them up. Minato and Kashina groaned as they woke up. Narumi, calm down. Why don't you wake Naruto up and we can walk around the village and see the festival preparation, and we will visit the clan heads and your friends. replied Minato. Narumi nodded and ran to Naruto's room. While Minato and Kashina got up, they smiled at their daughter's antics. 
they both went to go the usual morning routine of brushing their teeth. After that they changed while Kishina went to the kitchen to prepare breakfast for the family, and Minato reviewed what he was going to teach Naruto. Narumi ran through the halls and appeared in front of Naruto's room. She was scared to open it. She never has been inside Naruto's room before so she didn't know what was in there. Too scared to go inside, she decided to knock instead, hoping Naruto would answer. A Nikki Dot said Narumi while knocking on her brother's door. She got no answer, and knocked once again only to have no answer once again. She put her head against the walls to hear any noise but heard nothing. Assuming that he wasn't there, and still scared to go into his room, Narumi went to tell her parents. Narumi quickly went to the kitchen where both Minato and Kishina were. Kishina, seeing the sad look on Narumi's face, asked, what's wrong Narumi? Narumi looked at her and replied, Naruto isn't in his room. Shocking both, Minato and Kishina. Did you check his room? Asked Minato. Well I knocked and got no reply. I am scared to go into his room. Replied Narumi. Why are you scared? That's because I've never been into his room before, and I'm scared Nikki will be mad at me. Minato and Kishina were surprised, they too have never been into Naruto's room, and wondered what would be in there. Naruto seemed to be in there all the time, so they assumed there was something in there for him to do, but doesn't remember getting him anything that will allow him to stay in his room all day. How about we all go to Naruto's room then? Would you like that Narumi said Kishina, to which Narumi nodded in reply. The three of them quickly went to Naruto's room and stopped when they were in front of Naruto's room. Slowly Minato opened the door to his room, and when it opened all three of them were surprised. Naruto's room was what you would call plain, very plain. The walls were white, no dirty marks on it. Well his bed was neatly done showing that he was gone. His room was very clean, even cleaner than Minato and Kishina. There wasn't a single piece of clothing lying around anywhere. His clothes were neatly folded and the dirty ones in a basket at the side of his room. Narumi, Minato, and Kishina frowned at how plain his room was. Not a single decoration, on the walls. They looked around his room and noticed a bookcase. Filled with books, mostly advanced even Minato would have trouble reading some of the books on his own. The books ranged from romance novels to history books, there were many kinds of different books. Naruto can read these books at a surprised Minato. Kishina and Narumi remained silent, amazed how smart Naruto was. After a minute or so of being surprised they looked around his room once more. They noticed something on his desk. It was a small stack of paintings and drawings that Naruto did. They looked through each one and were shocked at how much of an artist Naruto was. These paintings he did were almost as good as professional artists. The paintings they saw were mostly about nature, but they were very beautiful. There were two paintings in particular that caught all their eyes. The first one was a painting of four people. Two yellow-haired male, and two red-haired females. You can obviously see that one male and female were children and the other two adults. All four of them seemed to be very happy. The three of them knew that the painting was about them and Naruto. Minato, who was holding the painting, turned it around for Kishina and Narumi to see. They saw Naruto's signature and when he painted this. It said that he painted this when he was around six, but something shocked them. What shocked them though was the title of the painting. The title was called Family, after reading a Kishina and Narumi became sad, but quickly let it go. They were going to make it up to him, that's a promise. They put the first painting down and looked at the second one that Kishina was currently holding. It was a painting of a blonde male looking over the scenery of nature. A lake covered by trees with mountains in the background. The man himself was standing on a cliff looking at nature, so they couldn't see the face of the man. They thought it was beautiful, probably one of Naruto's best paintings. Kishina turned the painting around and noticed that it was recently painted. The painting was titled Rise from the Shadow Dot, they didn't understand what it meant. They continued to understand the meaning of the painting until they were interrupted by a knock on the door. They turned around and were surprised to see Naruto standing at the door to his room. His face in white. Can I help you said Naruto coldly. Kishina quickly put the painting down and replied, Sorry Naruto, we wanted to tell you to come down and eat breakfast, but you were gone, so we came to your room to check up on you, to see you gone. Also we wanted to tell you to get ready to visit the clan heads. Naruto nodded and replied, I understand, now would you please leave so I can change. The three Namikas quickly left his room, and Naruto closed the door. He quickly changed into normal grey pants and a dark grey t-shirt, he threw his dirty clothes into his dirty laundry basket. When he was done getting ready he closed the door behind him, forgetting about the plan he left inside his dirty pants pocket. He went downstairs and ate breakfast with his family, and they left the house to walk around the village and clan houses. As they walked around the village, to see how the festival preparations were coming, it seemed that they were almost done. After the quick detour they went and visited the clan homes. Well to be more exact they all went to the Hayuga's homes, since they were invited to go there along with all the clan heads. At the Hayuga clan house, you could see Hinata and Ino talking with each other. 
Shikamaru, Chaoji, Kiba, and Shino were two hanging around each other. Well to be more exact Shikamaru was sleeping while Chaoji was eating chips, Kiba was petting his pet Akamaru, and Shino was silent or talking to bugs. The parents were watching their children play while talking. There was a knock on the door, and Hisashi, the clan head, answered it to see Minato and Kishina with their children. They could tell that Narumi couldn't wait to talk with her friend, and Naruto who well they couldn't tell his emotion. Hello Minato-san, nice of you to make it greeted Hiashi, who is a good friend of Minato. Yo Hiashi, how's it going replied Minato. Minato looked around the house and noticed a certain arrogant clan head missing. Where Fugaku he asked. Fugaku said something about not having time for childish things like getting together. Replied Hiashi. Minato laughed, dude got a stick up his mouth that's for sure Hiashi chuckled at his friend's attitude. After a quick greeting from the rest of the family, Minato and Kishina went to the adults to talk about things. Kishina glanced back at her children and hoped that they were at least starting to get along. Narumi looked at Naruto's determination in her eyes. And Nikki, would you like to play with me and my friends Naruto looked at her like she was crazy, didn't what he said yesterday mean anything to her. He wanted to say no until in the corner of his eyes he saw Kishina looking at them, hoping that they would get along. Then something came into Naruto's mind and he mentally smirked. If I pretend to forgive them, then they'll probably get off my back about things, which will make it easier for me to escape. Thinking they have won so they wouldn't need to worry about me that much. He looked at Narumi's still determined face and nodded, sure that would be nice. Narumi quickly dragged Naruto to her friends, which was Ino and Hinata, since they were the only girls there really, because it was a clan head family get together. As both Narumi and Naruto sat down, both Ino and Hinata greeted Narumi but were looking at Naruto. Naruto just shrugged it off and greeted both of them ignoring their looks. After a minute of awkwardness Ino, Hinata and Narumi talked like little gossip girls. Naruto groaned, closed his eyes and meditated as best as he could. Narumi saw this and frowned but understood that he didn't understand girl talk. While the clan heads were walking with each other and watching their children interact. Minato was currently talking with Hiashi, Shikaku, Choza, and Inoichi, while Kishina was talking with the wife of the clan heads, but really she was paying most of her attention to Naruto. She saw his eyes close which she thought that he was sleeping, and it made her frown because he was interacting with anyone. It made her start to think that Naruto doesn't have any friends and was lonely his whole life, which made her even more sad. She was part of the reason why he was lonely, because she played favorites and neglected him over Narumi. Not listening to her motherly instinct instead, listening to Minato and her ninja self, something she now regretted. After two to three hours it was noon, and time for the Namaka's family had to leave, so that they could prepare for the party and to see the festival preparation. During the clan visit, after Narumi finished her girl talk with Ino and Hinata. They tried to get to know Naruto better by asking him questions, to which he gave them answers and they started to talk. He pretended to enjoy being around his family. During the walk in the village, everyone greeted the Hokage and his family. While some secretly glared at Naruto, which he ignored. During the walk Kashina and Minato noticed that Naruto was talking with Narumi. It seems he forgives us both Kashina and Minato thought, as they continued walking. After an hour Minato decided that it was time to go home, so that they could prepare for the birthday party. When they reached inside the Namaka's home Kashina looked at her kids and said, why don't you two clean up and change for the party. Naruto and Narumi both nod and go to their rooms. Kashina went to change and cook for the party, while Minato got the decoration ready. Luckily he put some Horatian seals around the house, which made it quicker for him to decorate. Narumi finished about an hour later and went to Naruto's room only to find him sleeping. She didn't want to bother him, so she closed the door and went to the living room to help her dad with the decoration. Hours later, time 6 p.m. It was 6 p.m. time for the party to begin. The Namaka's house was filled with friends, children, and adults. There were the clan heads and their family, here is in Saratobi the third Hokage and his family, Naruto and Narumi's godparents Jureya and Tsunade. There were also some shinobi who were close friends to Minato and Kishina, one of which was Kakashi, Kurinai, and Yugao, who was once a student to Minato and Kishina. Narumi was currently talking with her friends which were Ino, Hinata, Sakura, Hanabi, and some girls in her class. There were also some guys that hung out with her like Shikamaru, Kiba, Kaoji, and Shino. Narumi though was not engaged in the conversation, instead she was trying to find Naruto. Earlier when she finished helping her dad with the decoration, she waited for her brother to finish his nap. She waited for a while, but then the guests started coming, and quickly her friends assaulted her. Naruto himself was standing in the corner away from the crowd where no one could see him. He was currently observing the party watching everyone and how the party was progressing, so that he would know the right time to escape. About an hour had passed and he finished eating dinner and still observed the party as it progressed. He smirked when they started to take out the alcohol. Now all I have to do is wait till they're all drunk. He thought to himself. 
30 minutes later most of the adults were drunk, including Minato, though he wasn't as drunk as the others. Naruto knew it was time for him to leave. He got up to go to his room until someone standing in front of him stopped him. He looked up to see Itachi with a smile. Hello, Itachi-san. Greeted Naruto. Itachi, still smiling, replied, Hello Naruto, where are you going? Just to my room I'm a little tired so I need some rest. This early. Yes. Itachi only nodded and pulled a small box out of his pocket and gave it to Naruto. Your birthday present, added Itachi. Naruto took the box thanking Itachi and opened it. Inside was a scroll. Confused, Naruto looked at Itachi who was still smiling at him. What is this he asked, still confused. Couple of Kate and I managed to copy from the Ichiha clan. But don't tell anyone. Replied Itachi. Naruto smiled, Itachi was like a brother to him and also a teacher. He thanked Itachi, gave him a hug, and excused himself to go to his room. In his room he got these things ready and checked if he had everything he needed. In his backpack he has a few storage scrolls holding food, cooking materials, and things for survival. He also brought and shrunk in for protection. Extra clothes consisting of two shirts, one gray one black, one black combat pants, and undergarments. Lastly was the scroll that he received from Itachi. He packed his things and put on his backpack. Put on his shoes, opened the window and looked at his room once more before he would leave. Looking over at his table he saw a stack of his artwork. He saw two paintings, the ones that his family was looking at earlier in the day. He picked one of the pictures up and put it in one of his scrolls. After he pulled out a kunai sliced the other picture making it break and jumped out of the window when he finished. He was lucky the gate was open for incoming people that might be late to the party. He sneaked past a couple of drunken people and exited the gate. In the village Naruto could see many people still celebrating. Children playing the games and the festival, while the mother watches over them or talks to their friends. The men were mostly drunk from the many alcohol they drank. Naruto went through the festival, making sure no one saw him. He hated the fact that the house was on the opposite side of the village from the main gate. So it was going to take him forever to reach the main gate, since the other gates were closed for the ceremony to make sure that if there was an attack, they would have to come through the main gate. It already took him an hour to get to the festival and only the beginning. It took him forever because he had to take long routes and make sure no one spotted him, not even the ambus. He sighed thinking about how much more distance he has left and the many people he would have to hide from in the festival. He inwardly groaned, this was going to take forever. Namaka's house, one hours after Naruto left. The time was 9, about an hour since Naruto left. The party doesn't seem to be getting smaller or tiring down, if anything it seems to be getting wilder. There was Karia coming from the living room, with many more drunk adults singing, and the children were running around the house. Minato, who was slightly drunk since he didn't drink much, quieted everyone down. Now then it is time for Narumi to open her presents. said Minato, when everyone was quiet and listening to Minato. Narumi, who heard what her father said, smiled in happiness. For a while now she has been sad because she hasn't found Naruto. But the mention of the present brought her out of her sad thoughts. The only thing in her mind at the moment was her present. First off was Jureya who walked up to Narumi with a giant scroll. Many people were wide-eyed knowing what the scroll was. Swan though was fuming when she saw the scroll she wanted to give Narumi the summoning contract to the slug, but apparently Jureya beat her to it. Narumi, I want to give you the toad summoning contact. said Jureya. Narumi's eyes widened, she knew what they were summoning from what her father told her, and also wanted to summon toads like her father. Narumi started to jump in glee. Jureya chuckled while everyone laughed. Now sign here with your blood. said Jureya, pointing to the blank space next to Minato's name. Narumi bit her thumb so blood could come out, then she wrote her name the best she could. After it was done Jureya closed the scroll, and Minato came up to Narumi telling her that she will have extra training, so that she could summon the toads. After she opened all the presents, which consist of clothes, toys, and things from her friends and clan heads. Her mother got her a wooden katana and said that she would be teaching her in the family kinjutsu style, which made Narumi happy. Minato gave her some of his speciality and said he will start preparing her for the more advanced stuff of his training. Makoto, who was watching the gifts, frowned. Speaking of Makoto, since the party started she has been looking for Naruto, but failed. She wanted to give Naruto a present of her own, which was a fox costume she thought would look really cute on Naruto, and a black trench coat. She asked her son Itachi to help her find him, which he did. When Itachi came back she asked him where Naruto was, and he told her that he was sleeping. She told herself that she would give Naruto a present later after Narumi finishes opening her presents, and the party starts once again. When she finished opening all her presents, which took about an hour because of her enormous pile of presents, everyone was about to go back to his or her own business when they heard a voice. Where's Naruto on Ichan asked Narumi, and everyone stopped what they were doing and looked around confused. 
They all forgot about Minato and Kashina's second child, the blonde boy with a whisker mark who always seemed quiet. Minato and Kashina were a little worried because they hadn't seen Naruto during the party either and hoped that he was fine. Kurinai, Yugao, and Anko who were also at the party were also worried for their friend, who they see as a younger brother. After saving Naruto, the three of them talked to Naruto and tried to get to know him. As time went by they got close to each other, the three girls saw him as a younger brother who they will protect no matter what. Don't worry about Naruto he went to his room to sleep. said Minato, who had just been informed by Itachi. Everyone nodded and went back to their things. Narumi frowned, her plan was ruined, but she didn't want to bother Naruto either. She sighed and went back to her friends. When Makoto saw everyone going back to the party, she slipped away from the party to give Naruto her present and maybe get to see how cute Naruto's sleeping form would look like so she can tease him about it. When she reached Naruto's room, she pressed her ears against the door to hear if Naruto made any sound while he slept. While Naruto-kun is a silent sleeper Makoto thought to herself when she heard nothing, unlike her husband Fugaku who snores really loud and grumbles something about Ichiha being the best, man that guy never stops being arrogant. She opened the door quietly and looked around the room. The only light was from the moon. She found the light switch and quickly switched it so the light would turn on. She looked around the now light room and was shocked to not see Naruto frown. She thought that he probably went to the restroom or something so she waited, might as well give Naruto his present while he was awake. While waiting Makoto looked around his room and saw the basket holding Naruto's dirty laundry. When she looked inside she saw a piece of paper slightly hanging out of one of Naruto's pant pockets. Curious, she pulled the paper out and read it. She gasped and dropped the box which holds Naruto's present. She quickly ran out of the room and back to the party, looking for Kishina and Minato. She quickly found Kishina and Minato, who were in a group talking with some of the clan heads. She quickly ran to them. Minato and Kishina saw Makoto coming up into the group slightly panting with fear and worry written all over her face. What's wrong Makoto asked Minato. It's Naruto replied Makoto, who didn't finish when Kishina interrupted her. What about Naruto kun Kishina interrupted. Naruto is leaving the village he shouted loudly that the whole party heard and stopped what they were doing to look at Makoto. Kishina and Minato were shocked to hear this. What do you mean leaving the village asked Minato loudly. I went to Naruto's room to give him my present. I didn't find Naruto sleeping, instead I found this sheet of paper hanging out of one of Naruto's pants. Makoto gave both Kishina and Minato the sheet of paper she found. Minato and Kishina quickly took it and read what it said. Their eyes widened when they finished. Kishina broke down crying, he didn't forgive us she said while sobbing. Narumi who heard what Makoto said, went up to her parents hoping what she heard was false. Dusan, is Ani-san really gone she asked wearily. Minato looked at her daughter, she looked into her eyes and saw fear. Fear that what she heard was true. Minato didn't want to answer her so he turned away. Narumi saw what her father did and somewhat understood what it meant and broke down crying herself. Minato himself felt even worse, he relooked over the plan and noticed that there might be a chance to get his son back. Anbu shouted Minato. Then some Anbu appeared in front of Minato kneeling. What is Hokage-sama said in Anbu wearing a bear mask? Find my son Naruto and make sure he doesn't reach the main gate. Why Hokage-sama? Because Naruto is planning on leaving Konoha and I will not lose my son shouted Minato, getting angry that the Anbu has not left yet. The Anbu quickly left, doing what they were told. Minato himself was preparing to leave when he was stopped by a couple of Jonin, Jiraiya, Kakshi, the clan heads excluding Fugaku, who thought that the demon brat should just leave which got a glare from Kashina, while well, inwardly she was confused, demon brat. Naruto isn't a demon. Minutes later everyone was ready including Kashina. Minato looked shocked to see Kashina. What are you doing Kashina asked Minato. Helping to look for Naruto, what else she replied, getting annoyed with why they haven't left yet and Minato questioning something like this. No you can't, you have to stay and watch the children. Don't worry I will bring Naruto back with that Minato left, leaving an angry Kashina before she could say anything. Makoto, who was there, went up to her longtime friend. Go find Naruto, I'll stay and watch the kids. She told Kashina. Thank you Makoto-chan Kashina replied and started to leave. You better bring Naruto back. Shouted so Kashina could hear. I would replied Kashina, with that she disappeared via Shunshin. Outside Konoha. Naruto finally got outside of Konoha, though it took forever. He easily got past the guards at the gate, since they were knocked out from drinking too much. He signed to himself, it took him forever to get here after dodging people and making sure not to be spotted. He was lucky the festival pretty much reached all the way to the main gate. Finally out of the village. said Naruto with relief. Still you shouldn't relax yet, you're still in Konoha territory. Yoko told Nordo, sounding slightly tired. Yoko was right even though he was right outside of Konoha, it didn't mean he should relax, since he was still in Konoha territory. 
He inwardly nodded to Yoko, but noticed that when she talked she sounded a little weary and tired. He wanted to ask her what was wrong, but felt chakra signals that brought him out of his current thoughts. He cursed to himself when he sensed that they were all at Anvil level shinobi. Quickly he hid himself behind a tree and tried his best to conceal his chakra, hoping no one would sense him. After waiting for a while he saw a few pass by him. When there was no one left he got out of his hiding spot and began running again, only to stop when he noticed about three people waiting for him. He cursed to himself since he knew now that his plan was going to fail. In front of him stood Kakashi, Jiraiya, and Itachi. Naruto stopped a few yards away from them, staring at them with impassive eyes. Naruto, you need to come home. said Jiraiya. Naruto glared at Jiraiya and Kakashi, two people he didn't really care for, since they both were somehow related to his father. One being his teacher while the other being his student. But both were strong, something he respected about them a little. Why would I do that? growled Naruto. That's because your father, mother and sister want you back home. Sensei, Kishina Nisan, and Narumi-chan wants you home, so you all can be a family again. said Kakashi jumping into the conversation, hoping to change Naruto's mind about leaving. He frowned when Naruto's face didn't lighten up, if anything it was even madder than before. Naruto now glared at Kakashi and replied, since when have I been considered family? I was never considered family to them. I was neglected and ignored for what? Only because Narumi contains Kayubi's chakra. Making both Kakashi and Jiraiya both flinch. Naruto, seeing both Jiraiya and Kakashi flinching, tried to run, but stopped when he saw them also move. Naruto examined them and noticed that Jiraiya and Kakahi stood in front while Itachi stood a few yards back. Seconds later Naruto felt more chakra signal he mentally cured himself. He didn't want his plan to fail, all that planning for what? Only to fail, no he will not allow that. He had to think of something, anything quickly. Then something came into his mind he only hoped that it would work. Betting into a stance with his arms crossed in an X formation, blue chakra began to cover around him. Kakashi, Jirei were confused but got into a fighting stance. Gravity seal Kai. Release, said Naruto, making both Kakashi and Jiraiya's eyes widen in shock. Naritok knows they both thought. Naruto saw the shocked look and used it as a cue to dash off, passing both Kakashi and Jiraiya. Kakahi and Jiraiya who were still shocked, saw Naruto make a fun for it, but they were late to react, and the speed they saw him made them even more shocked, he's fast they both thought. It wasn't that Naruto was faster than them or anything, it was just that Naruto was really fast for his age, even faster than them when they were his age. Though Kakahi was fast, his fastest being around low speed, Naruto was at least mid to high speed. Naruto smiled and continued to run into the forest. In a matter of seconds he was gone from Jiraiya and Kakashi, but he went off-road so it would be harder for them to find him. While running he felt like he forgot something or someone. When he remembered he cursed to himself because the person he forgot was standing in front of him. Itachi. During the interaction between Naruto and the two shinobi, Itachi stood behind watching Naruto. When Naruto made a dash for it, he followed him and hit his chakra to sneak in front of Naruto. Now he stood in front of Naruto with conflicting feelings. Truthfully he hated the villagers for beating Naruto, someone he saw as a younger brother, though he had Sasuke, the guy was like his father, someone he disliked greatly. He knew that the marriage between his parents was arranged, but would it kill him to show some affection to his wife. He barely talks to her and would treat her like a toy, or a housemaid. Also the way he interacted with people, if they weren't an Achiha he would think lowly of them. Sure the Achiha has the Sharingan but it wasn't the strongest, and it had its drawbacks too. He tried to change Sasuke, but Sasuke had adapted to his father's personality and remained unchanging. Itachi Nai, please let me go. pleaded Naruto. Itachi looked into Naruto's eyes and saw his eyes sad and pleading. Itachi, a Konoha shinobi, must follow the order of the Hokage, but he didn't want to see Naruto suffer. But how will I survive? It's really dangerous outside the village. asked Itachi. I read a few books on survival, and if someone attacks, I can try my best to hold them off and make a run for it. I mean I did hit you a few times during our spars. replied Naruto. Itachi looked into Naruto's eyes and saw that he wouldn't change his mind. He really didn't want Naruto to live, but if can take care of himself, then he guessed it was okay. Itachi sighed and reached into his pocket and pulled out a special. Naruto immediately knew that it was his father, Minato's, that he uses for his called the Flying Thunder God technique. Use this Naruto-kun when you get into serious trouble, said Itachi seriously. Naruto reluctantly nodded, took the kunai, and put it in his pocket. Thank you Itachi Nai said Naruto as he gave Itachi a hug which Itachi returned. Now go to Naruto before the others find you. said Itachi. Naruto nodded and dashed off. Minutes after Kakashi and Jiraiya came. Itachi, did you see Naruto? asked Jiraiya. No I haven't I think he went the other way though. We must hurry before we lose him. replied Itachi, pointing to a different direction. 
Kakashi and Jiraiya nodded, and all three of them followed the direction Itachi pointed to. Naruto himself was glad that Itachi let him go, sure he was young, but he knew how to defend himself, he could give low to Midoran for their money. He made a mental note that he owed Itachi later on in the future. As he continued running, a red blur passed by him and stopped a few feet in front of him, making him stop. Naruto now saw who was in front of him and glared at the person. For the person in front of him was his mother Kashina Yuzumaki Namikas. She wore her battle gear, but without her katana since she had to rush. How Kashina found Naruto was rather difficult. When she started looking she thought that he was probably in the forest of Hai no Kuni, fire country, already, so she dashed her way to the forest. When she got there she started looking but noticed Itachi. She asked him if he had found which he answered no, and they went their separate ways. It was only luck that she found him, because of footsteps she heard like someone was running. She followed the sound and shortly after she found her son. Naruto, why are you leaving? Is it because of us? If so then we will make it up to you Kashina asked Naruto sadly hoping to change Naruto's mind about leaving. Please, you had your chance years ago. I've even tried to become a family by suggesting going to places, but what happened? Oh that's right my suggestions were overruled by Narumi yelled Naruto, his anger getting the best of him. He wasn't done yet, he was by far from done, since he was leaving anyways might as well tell her everything not like she care anyways. I've always tried to do anything to become a family, but every time, you ignore me, always choosing Narumi over me. I stop trying because I know what will happen, he continued, making Kashina sadder than before. But that doesn't mean you should leave. We can make it up to you responded Kashina after finishing her flashbacks. Like I said you lost your chances about two years ago. You neglected and ignored me over Narumi for what? all because she holds Kayubi's powers. But she had to be trained to control Kayubi's power, also Minato-kun said so, and he knows what is best. Naruto was getting more furious when his mother mentioned Minato. So what? That doesn't mean you have to neglect me, you could have always given me books on chakra or maybe the basic anything. But no. You just shoot me like I'm some kind of fly and tell me to go to my room, telling me I'll be trained when I'm ready. And don't talk about that nonsense Minato in front of me. Hey don't talk to your father like that yelled Kishina. The nonsense isn't my father more like an overconfident fool. If he was so great then he should have known that it is going to be impossible for Narumi to control Kaiubi's chakra. What do you mean impossible asked Kishina, confused. You were a Jinchuriki yourself, you should know. Without the soul, all the power is just a mass of destruction, hatred, and madness. Narumi cannot control that. For Narumi to control the power she needs the soul, which is sealed inside me. The soul and power must coexist with each other like yin and yang, light and dark. How else were you able to control the Kaiubi's power? How do you know all this stuff? It doesn't matter, move now so I can leave this retarded village. Don't talk about your home like that. That place isn't my home. It's more like hell shouted Naruto, shocking Kashina. How Kashina was confused, was ignoring Naruto really that bad. What do you mean? You know how. No, I don't. Really now? So you don't know that I get beat almost every other day of my life making Kashina shocked to her core. Naruto was getting beat up. By who? For what reason? Who did that to you Naruto was getting irritated. What does she mean, who did it to him, and she knew the answer. You know who did it. Why ask now Kashina was shocked, she didn't know who it was, nor did she know that Naruto was getting beat up and being called a demon in the first place. No, I don't. You mean to tell me that you don't know a bunch of villagers beat me up? What? Why would they do that? That's because they think I'm a demon Kashina was confused. Demon she thought to herself. Why would they think you are a demon? Are you kidding me you don't know? That is because since I hold the Kaiubi soul, they think that the Kaiubi influences me. So they think I'm Kaiubi and would beat me up Naruto stopped to take a deep breath, he was mad, his face red with anger. Kashina on the other hand was taking this in slowly, but eventually her eyes started to swell with tears coming out. And you want to know what's funny added Naruto, Kashina looked up at him wondering what it might be. That nonsense Minato allowed them to beat me up, using me as a scapegoat for their pain and loss from the Kaiubi attack. Yes Naruto knew, it didn't really take a genius to figure it out. Since he remembered seeing constant familiar faces during his beatings. He guessed that the fool must have let them free from prison and charges. He also found out when he went to the Hokage room to confirm his thoughts. When he saw a Lee civilian from prison signed. Ashina froze when she heard that Minato allowed her son to be beaten. She didn't know what to believe. She had trusted her husband believing that he always knew what to do. But after hearing what Naruto just told her she didn't know anymore. Right now, I cannot forget what happened to me, the pain is too much I can't handle it. said Naruto, Kishina brought out her current thoughts and started thinking about what has happened to Naruto. She was thinking about everything Naruto had told her. She started having flashbacks of all the events with Naruto. 
She remembered the times when Naruto would suggest things only for Narumi to say something else, how Minato along with her agreed with Narumi. She remembered the time Naruto asked to be trained only for Minato and her to tell him to go to his room. Truthfully she could have done something to Naruto, but instead she listened to Minato and told Naruto that he would be trained when ready. Going through these flashbacks she felt like an idiot, like a fangirl. After Minato saved the village from the Kaiubi attack, he was seen as a hero. After that Kashina, thinking Minato was the strongest shinobi ever, followed him like a fangirl, never questioning anything he said or done. Thinking what he says or does is the right thing. Now she didn't know what to think. She wanted to believe what Naruto said was false, about the beatings and Minato, all of it false. She kept on thinking while Naruto kept on talking. She didn't hear a single thing of what Naruto said as she kept on thinking. When she got back to her senses she was too late because the last thing she heard from Naruto was goodbye Ka-san and left. Leaving a teary Kashina who broke down crying not having the willpower to chase after him. Naruto has finally escaped and will not to be heard from Konoha for many years. Forest of Hai no Kuni. Naruto was currently walking throughout the forest of Hai no Kuni. At the moment he was holding a kunai, in case he was abused. It was dark, probably midnight. He had been walking for about two hours after the conversation with Kashina. After the conversation he felt a little more relieved to get it off his chest, but during the talk he noticed that she was shocked, as she didn't know anything. Well that didn't mean he was going to forgive her anytime soon, if she wanted to be forgiven, then she would have to earn it. That is if he ever saw her again. Naruto-kun, you need to find a place to rest. Try to find a cave or somewhere you can hide. Yoko told Naruto. Naruto inwardly nodded and began his search. 30 minutes after searching he found a small cave by a river. He settled down in the cave and opened his backpack. He pulled out one storage scroll and a sleeping bag came out. He was about to make a fire, but thought otherwise since he was still in Hai no Kuni, fire country, and a fire could give away his spot. Minutes later he was in his sleeping bag getting ready to sleep. Night Yoko-chan. Naruto mentally said to Yoko. Good night Naruto-kun. replied Yoko. Naruto went to sleep, while planning for tomorrow. Well deep in his sleep he never heard Yoko's tired panting voice, after she finished talking with Naruto. I don't have any more time left. I hope Naruto-kun finds a sensei soon, someone to protect him. If I remember correctly there is a small village in between Mizu no Kuni, Water Country, and Kaminari no Kuni. Lighting Country Yoko said to herself panting at the same time. Next morning. Naruto woke up early so he could continue his travels. It was 5 in the morning and the sun was barely out. He pulled out his scroll and put his sleeping bag back inside the scroll, and then pulled out a map. He also made a quick breakfast and ate while he examined the map. And where should I go from here he asked himself. Naruto-kun tried going to the island in between Mizu no Kuni and Kaminari no Kuni. There is a small village there that is neutral from all hidden villages. I used to live there a long time ago. It's a strong village, and has very kind people. Maybe you can find a sensei there. Yoko told Naruto to try her best to sound normal. It seems to work since Naruto didn't seem to notice anything at the moment. But she knew it wouldn't work for long. Why was she hiding it? Simply, she didn't want Naruto to worry about her. Okay Yoko-chan, how would I get there? I need money to get on a boat to get there. Ask Naruto, sure the plan seemed good, but there was one problem he totally forgot, and it was to bring some money. He wasn't expecting to get a ferry or something along those lines. So much for planning early. You can always hide in one of those crates where people ship supplies towards the island. Replied Yoko. Naruto sighed and thought about it. I guess it could work. So how do you get to the dock? Naruto looked at the map to figure out where he was. After 10 minutes he figured that he was about 2 hours worth of travel to reach the nearest dock, which was at the edge of Hai no in between Mizu no Kuni and Kaminari no Kuni. He figured from there he hoped that the boat would take him all the way straight to the next island. Since the island Yoko told him it was the farthest island out of all of them. He probably would have to take multiple boats to reach the island. He sighed to himself. Hope this place Yoko-chan told me is worth it. He thought to himself as he finished his breakfast, packed his things and began walking towards his destination. Two days later. It was the afternoon and Naruto was now at the dock. He could see a person stacking supplies on a small ship. It seems that there was only one person loading the ship. Naruto was looking at the man who was working. He has short flat light blue hair and stood at a height about 6'1 and looked around the mid-twenties. His wardrobe was somewhat shinobi clothing. But the black coat and black combat pants and shinobi sandals. On his face he wore sunglasses, which Naruto thought was pretty cool. Well, it looked a lot cooler than Aburam's sunglasses. On his hand he wore black fingerless gloves. Naruto then decided to talk to the workers to ask him where the ship was headed. Excuse me sir. Said Naruto. The worker stopped what he's doing to look at Naruto. 
what can I do for you kid, and where's your parents replied the worker when he noticed that there was a kid by himself. I accidentally went on a ship last week and brought me here. I think my parents are worried sick about me. I was wondering if this ship was going to the island up ahead. It's the island that is the farthest from here. Explained Naruto. The worker stared at Naruto for a moment, then smiled. Sure kid, this ship actually has some supplies to ship over there anyways you can tag along. Said the worker. Naruto smiled back and nodded. Thank you kind sir. Thanks Naruto. While the worker smiled back at him. No problem kid, just got to load a few more things, and we will be off in about an hour, or so. Naruto nodded, and the worker went back to work. While waiting Naruto reversed his surroundings and went through what he did in the past two days. For the past two days, his trip seemed rather smooth. He didn't encounter any missing nin, or Konoha nin. Just one weak bandit, he quickly threw a kunai at the bandit's leg and ran off. During his travels he talked to Yoko a lot, since she was the only person to keep him company. Through their talk he noticed that Yoko's voice seemed to become more tired or softer than her usual self. He tried to ask her what was wrong, but she said it was nothing, so he didn't press on it too much. Hey Naruto-kun, why didn't you go with the plan I told you to dot ask Yoko, still trying her best to sound as normal as she can. Though as the days progressed it seemed to be a lot harder. During their talk on the trip she seemed to have slipped up a few times causing Naruto to notice. When he tried to ask her she quickly replied that it was nothing. Now it was getting difficult for her to even sound normal. She just hoped that Naruto would find someone strong to teach him soon. That's because if I'm found I'll probably get kicked off on the next island. Also I don't want to be hiding in multiple ships or stay crouching in one place for a few days. Naruto replied. After an hour or so the worker was finally done loading the boat with supplies. Alright kid let's go. Said the worker. Naruto quickly got up and ran to the worker. Hey what's your name kid, I forgot to ask. He asked. It's Naruto, what's yours said Naruto as they continued to walk towards the small boat. Me? I'm Shin Barong. Replied the now known Shin. Naruto nodded and he went onto the boat waiting for Shin to finish. Shin went on minutes after and they started to sail off towards the island. How long do you think it will take to get there asked Naruto. Well since we are going straight there, probably around three days. Replied Shin. Naruto was shocked. He thought that they were going to visit the other islands first before going to where he wanted to go. Don't you have to drop supplies off to the other island first asked Naruto, to which Shin smiled. No, these supplies go to the farthest island. Replied Shin, only for Naruto to nod dumbly. So Naruto, who are your parents, I actually live there myself. I might even know your parents since it's a pretty small village. Asked Shin changing the subject. Now Naruto inwardly cursed and frowned, which Shin noticed and raised an eyebrow. My parents are Riku and Miki Sato. Said Naruto lying hoping that Shin would buy it. Shin himself was looking at Naruto, a raised eyebrow behind his sunglasses, which Naruto couldn't see. Who might as well play along. Wonder what his life was like for him to come here. Shin wondered to himself. He was going to find out more about this Naruto kid. Oh really? I know them. Haven't talked to them in a while though, didn't know they had a child though. Dot replied Shin. Naruto inwardly sighed thinking he got away with it. After that they talked about random things to get to know each other. It was getting late. Shin made dinner for Naruto and him, as they ate they started to get to know each other. Every time Shin would ask about Naruto's life, Naruto would always lie or cover up the real thing. During the talk Shin would always wonder how Naruto's life really is. Well I'll find out soon anyways. He thought to himself. After they ate, Naruto went to sleep while Shin stayed up to watch for land or possible attack. Shin turned and looked at Naruto studying him, after that he looked back at the sea. An hour later he looked back at Naruto making sure that Naruto was sound asleep. He walked towards Naruto, his right pointer finger glowing white. He then put his finger on Naruto's forehead. Memory reader, memory reader he said quietly. The finger then glowed brighter. Shin then appeared in front of a door. He opened it and saw a white room with a chair. Quickly he sat on the chair and then looked straight ahead. Visions then appeared on the white wall. It was Naruto's memory from the day of his birth all the way till he met Shin. Shin watched everything, his eyes widened at the things Naruto had been through. He didn't expect Naruto to have such a life. He was mad at Naruto's parents because they neglected him for his sister because of power, then his family wanted to repent after such a long time. He saw how Naruto trained by himself and some help from the few friends he had. He smiled to see Naruto's determination to become strong. While waiting for his life Shin created a dislike for Minato, Naruto's dad. The fool thought that it was better to be a hero than his family. Even allowing his own son to be beaten so that villagers could relieve their anger. It disgusted him really, and as for his mother, he didn't think she was a fangirl. The way she followed Minato without thinking, it also kind of disgusted him. 
Drew Kashina was ridiculously hot and he loved women, but only ones with a mind of their own and wouldn't follow someone without thinking. After watching the conversation with Naruto and Kishina, he saw the shocked look on her face when Naruto told her of his beatings and how Minato allowed it to happen. It seemed that she didn't know about it, and if she knew anything about women and mothers, it's that hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, especially when it's one of their children involved. Sheen smirked maybe she'll redeem herself who knows. He thought to himself. After he went through everything he quickly exited Naruto's memory ending up back on the boat. The sky was still dark, showing that he hadn't spent that long inside Naruto's mind. He looked at the sky and felt a pulse go through his head, he then turned his gaze to Naruto and smiled. Seems my search is over. said Shin to himself. As he pulled a sleeping bag of his own and fell asleep. The next three days of traveling have been somewhat good. Naruto has started to like Shin, while Shin started to like Naruto seeing him as a son of his own. They reached the small village, and Naruto was shocked at what he saw. The village was probably the smallest village he ever saw. He knew small villages, but this village beat those by far. This village was probably the smallest village ever, with a population of around 30 people. He could tell that the village was an agriculture base, due to the many farmlands he saw. When they reached the dock Naruto helped Sheen get the supplies off. Alright Naruto so where's your home? I'll take you there. said Sheen. Naruto then froze, he had to think of something fast. It's okay, I can get there myself. Plus you should take care of the supplies. replied Naruto. Alright then. Be safe, hope to see you around. Sheen smiled and waved to Naruto, who waved back at Sheen. Naruto then turned around and walked towards the village, looking for someone to train him. Though behind him he could see the smirking face of Sheen. As Naruto walked through the village he saw the villagers smiling at him. He replied by smiling back at them. While walking Naruto tried to look for someone strong to train him, but he didn't find anyone. All he found were the villagers farming their farms or little kids playing with each other. As he walked farther towards the tall mountains the village seemed to get smaller until it completely disappeared. Now he was in a different village, it was darker and deserted. He looked around and found that there were houses that were deserted. The houses looked run down or broken, there were broken house pieces lying on the side of the road. What happened here asked Naruto. Naruto stopped on the ride and closed his eyes to talk to Yoko, seeing as there was no one he assumed that he was safe. I don't know Naruto-kun, last time I remember this place it was prosperous, and there were a lot more people than what we just saw. Replied Yoko, sounding very tired like she was on the verge of fainting. This got Naruto worried, he didn't know what was wrong, but Yoko never sounded like this before. Are you okay Yoko-chan asked Naruto worried. I'm fine Naruto-kun, don't worry about me. Naruto watches out. I sense large chakra nearby replied Yoko, changing the subject when she sensed the large chakra. Naruto opened his eyes when he also sensed it, but it was already too late because he felt a hand on his shoulders. This part of the village used to be prosperous, filled with many villagers all happy. Then a giant ruthless storm came and destroyed this part of the village. After that ninjas from other hidden villages attacked this village, killing almost everyone. Said the person who had a hand on Naruto's shoulder. Naruto could tell that it was a man due to his masculine voice, and it also sounded familiar, he just couldn't figure out who. This happened about 100 hundred years ago during the time when the five great hidden villages rose. The Shah aim of each respective village and their army attacked them. They attack the village because this village holds great knowledge. They hold everything about ninja and many more. All kinds of even forbidden ones that were never heard of and seals that would make seal masters now look like novices due to how strong and advanced it was. After the attack they tried to take the scroll of technique and knowledge, but the leader of the village sealed it away in a giant scroll with a blood seal, only a person with the same blood as the leader of the village or people of the village could open it. But all the people died in the attack, leaving no one able to open the scroll. The people before were wanderers that wanted to settle down, so they made a village that you just came through. When the man finished Naruto turned to see who it was, and to his shock, it was Sheen. Sheen what are you doing here asked Naruto, surprised. Sheen turned and smiled at Naruto. I could ask you the same dot replied Sheen, but before Naruto could respond Sheen interrupted him. I know everything about you Naruto, or should I say Naruto Namika's dot making Naruto's eyes widened. I looked through your memory while you were sleeping. Why? Because I could tell you were lying to me the whole time, and there was something about you that seemed interesting. Naruto was taking all this information in stride. So you knew all along dot he mumbled, which Sheen nodded. You won't take me back to my father will you he asked somewhat afraid if Sheen might say yes. No, I won't. Actually I came to offer you something. said Sheen, making Naruto's attention turn towards him. I offer to train you in this village secrets and techniques. Naruto's eyes widened with shock, but how? You said all the people of this village died, so no one can open the scroll to learn the secrets he exclaimed, to which Sheen started chuckling. 
but lol except one he yells and pulls out a giant scroll that says Barong clan. This here Naruto is the one and only scroll of the Barong villager clan, since before hidden villages ninjas lived in clans and fought for land. Sheen continued. I am the last survivor of my clan, and I have been finding someone to pass my knowledge to. That's when I found you Naruto. You have the determination to become strong. When things have not gone your way, you find ways around it. Though I don't believe leaving your home was a good idea, I'm glad you did because if you didn't, I probably would have never found you. Naruto was shocked, Sheen, a person who he thought was a normal person who didn't know anything about the ninja world, is the last survivor of this amazingly strong clan, known as the Baron clan. So Naruto, do you want to learn from me? asked Sheen. Naruto broke out of his thoughts, and a big grin came on his face. Hells yeah I do shouted Naruto, Sheen chucked at Naruto. Alright Naruto, but before that I need to do a blood ritual. said Sheen. Naruto tilts his head in confusion. I asked Naruto. I need to because then you'll be able to open the scroll, and I bet you probably want to get rid of anything that is related to your family. replied Sheen. Naruto nodded when he heard everything and nodded showing that he wanted this. Yes now I can finally cut all my ties with him and his family. Naruto thought to himself. But before that I need you to show me your seal. Said Sheen bringing Naruto out of his thoughts and doing what Sheen told him to do, though he was confused at the same time. Suddenly on Sheen's right hand, his five fingers started to glow white, and he yelled. Tamashi no, soul release he, then brought his finger into Naruto's seal, making Naruto's eye widened. Sheen's fingers then slip into Naruto's stomach where the seal was placed. Sheen then makes a move on his hand, showing that he is holding something. He pulled his hand back, and out came his hand and also something else. Both Naruto and Sheen looked to see who it was, and were shocked to see Yoko in her kimono. Sheen instantly bursted backward with a nosebleed when he saw the red beauty, while Naruto's shocked face turned to worry when he saw Yoko's tired form. She was currently lying on the ground panting. Yoko-chan, what's wrong? asked Naruto, worried, as he ran up to Yoko. Yoko couldn't respond because she was too tired. She is going to die. said Sheen, making Naruto turn to him horrified. What no way. You can't be serious shouted Naruto, tears started forming in his eyes, when he heard he might lose his best friend, one of the only few people that took care of him. And someone who he loved and will always protect with his life. I'm serious Naruto. replied Sheen flatly. The soul and power must coexist with each other. If the power does not have the soul then it is mindless and full of darkness. But if the soul does not have the power then it doesn't have the power to live. The only reason she was able to live so long is because inside the seal it slowed the process down. But now she has reached her limit. He finished, as Naruto was now in full blown tears. Yoko chan, I'm sorry, if only I could have found a way to save you. Naruto cried on Yoko. Yoko used her willpower to hold on to Naruto. It's okay, Naruto kun. At least I know you are safe and will be strong in the future. She told him. Sheen, who was watching this in the background, also started to cry. Then he remembered something and walked towards Naruto. Naruto, I just remember something that will save your friend there. Said Sheen. Naruto turned to Sheen hope in his eyes. Please save her, please Naruto pleaded. Sheen nodded to Naruto, going through his memories he understood how important the girl was to Naruto. Naruto moves out of the way. Naruto did as he was told and moved, but never let go of Yoko's hand. Sheen then went through a few hand seals and said, Tamashi no Chikara no, soul power revival. Yoko's body started to glow in a white glow, shocking Naruto and Yoko. Don't worry Naruto, I sent Yoko's soul back to her body so that they could be one again. Sheen told Naruto. Naruto smiled at Sheen, and then turned to smile at Yoko. Look Yoko-chan now you live shouted Naruto while smiling, making Yoko's face a little red. Yup, but I'll have to be away from you seeing as I'll go back to my powers which are inside your sister. Replied Yoko, which made Naruto frown when he heard the news. Don't worry I'll be fine, and I won't let your sister control my powers. I'll only use it when she is in danger, so that we both live, seeing that if she dies so will I. Naruto nodded slowly because he looked at Yoko with determination in his eyes. Don't worry Yoko-chan when I'm done with my training I'll come and set you free. That's a promise shouted Naruto. Yoko smiled sweetly at Naruto. I'll be waiting for you to come and save me Naruto kun. She said to Naruto, then he gave Naruto a quick kiss on the cheek, shocking Naruto and also making him blush a little. She then disappeared in a flash of light, and her soul soared through the sky and towards Konoha. Alright then Naruto, are you ready for the blood ritual? asked Sheen as he waited for Naruto to calm down a bit. Yes I am. replied Naruto excitedly, he wanted to get this over with so that he could begin his training. You sure Naruto? This will change your whole DNA, you won't be the same blood as your family anymore. added Sheen making Naruto groan. I already said yes, so hurry up and do it. Sheen quickly went to Naruto and told him to lie down. He then told Naruto to take his shirt off, which Naruto quickly did as he was told. 
After that Sheen drew a really complicated seal on Naruto's chest. When he was done he bit his hand so that blood could fall on Naruto. Quickly he went through many fast hand seals and shouted, Hakai no kai no, blood body of destruction. The blood started spreading all over the seal, covering every bit of it. Then suddenly it went into Naruto's body, and Naruto was put into a world of pain and agony. The blood was destroying all his nerves, DNA, blood, everything. After a few seconds Sheen quickly drew another seed of seals, this time different over Naruto's chest, since the seal before disappeared when the blood spread over. He then again dropped blood again on the seal, and went through a different set of hand seals. When he was done he shouted Kitsuaki no Tensha Tai no, blood transfer body revival. The blood then started to once again spread around the seal and into Naruto's body. Instead this time inside Naruto's body the blood started to grow and expand. Naruto's body started to fill up with the blood of Sheen, and gained a new set of DNA. After a good 30 minutes of pain, the pain started to calm down, and Naruto breathing was coming back to normal. 30 minutes later the pain was completely gone, and Naruto was back to normal. Naruto opened his eyes revealing his still electric blue colored eyes. Naruto then stood up and faced Sheen, showing him the new changes that happened. Naruto's hair changed from yellow to a very light blue color, almost white, but somehow his hair was still the wild spiky hair he had before. He now stood at a height of 3'8", and for some reason his body seemed more defined. For Naruto himself he felt more stronger, and felt like he had a lot more chakra than before. I feel amazing. Naruto is still trying to get used to his new body, and marveling at his newfound strength. Sheen chuckled at Naruto. So Naruto liked the new you he asked him. Naruto nodded, yeah can I ask you something? Sure what is it? Does this mean you're my two sen now? Sheen smiled when he heard this. Sure, if you want me to, that is. That would be awesome yelled Naruto. But first you must know my real name. Said Sheen, Naruto looked at Sheen, confused. Sheen is my brother's name, but he died. Before I was supposed to be the next ruler, but I wanted to travel around the world, so I switched places with my twin brother. I took his name and he took mine. When I heard that the village was being attacked I tried to come back as fast as I can, but it was too late. The village was destroyed and everyone died leaving me that last survivor of our village. I searched for the remaining survivor, but instead of finding anyone, I found this scroll and a letter from my brother telling me everything that happened. From then on I learned everything I can from the scroll, and to find a worthy person to teach them to. That when I found you Naruto. Naruto, you will be my first and only apprentice. Finished Sheen. Naruto's eyes widened when he heard everything especially the part where he was going to be Sheen first, apparently but unfortunately he didn't hear the only part. Wait wouldn't that make you over 100 years old? How come you don't look a day over 25 asked Naruto when he realized Sheen's age. He up. It's kind of a clan secret how I survived so long, you will figure it out later on in your training. Sheen told Naruto. So what's your real name too sen asked Naruto, changing the subject and now calling Sheen by dad. It's you Barong. So you're ready for your training said the now known you, with a sadistic smile on his face when he said training. Naruto smiled back at his dad. Hell yeah he yelled. It's not going to be easy, if anything it's going to be hell. Wouldn't have it any other way to send dot with that you and Naruto walk towards the mountain where Naruto will be trained and comes back stronger than before well if he survives.